If there's anybody here who doesn't know that uh, Bob Weiler is the uh, owner and principal of the Weiler Company, which is a tremendous community asset, family business, uh, successful as business uh, and also a tremendous community uh, uh, supporter. Um, if there's anybody here who didn't know that Bob, for instance, was in uh, Business First last time as one of the Power 100 in Columbus. If, if there's anybody here who didn't know that, why don't you stand up? <laughs> okay. Uh, Bob has uh, many, many interests, as you, as you can well imagine, and he's proven over the years. We're here to talk about uh, uh, with liberty and free coda for all. You'll find out why. And uh, you'll be asked some questions, too. So here we go. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, your third generation uh, son is here. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank my longtime friends. I don't use the word old anymore at my age. Uh, longtime friend Ken Ackerman for asking me to be here. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have my son Jim and his son, my grandson, Tondo, Ray, who are in the back. Uh, and I'm also especially honored to have one of the most outstanding people in our community that I have known, Dr. Amy Acton. And I think we all know that uh, Amy was uh, Governor DeWine's uh, chief medical advisor during COVID and probably the most calming influence we had at a time when we really needed it. So, Amy, thank you for being here. <laughs> so, I, was there a question, or where are we? <laughs> okay. uh, this is yellow. Okay. Hear me? Okay, well, uh, this is highly re re uh, rehearsed, as you can uh, tell. So, Bob, the uh, uh, Liberty and Free Coda for All title of this uh, uh, certainly implies a need. We know Columbus is growing rapidly, so even more than ever, getting around for all purposes is an issue, right? Correct. And uh, I had the privilege, oh, some 20 years ago or so, of being appointed to the Coda Board in our first meeting uh, and every meeting thereafter, the discussion was, what can we do to increase ridership? And I made the motion half in jest, but half seriously, why don't we make ridership free? I think that would increase ridership. And I couldn't get a second of the motion. But then as we start thinking about it, every meeting thereafter, what can we do to increase ridership? And by the way, a little known fact, we hit the ridership high in 1988. We have not yet gone back to that number. And for the last, oh, 15, 20 years, we've been languishing around 18 to 19 million riders a year. Uh, of course, COVID, we have to take that out, but we still haven't gotten up above the approximately 20 million riders. And so if we really want to increase ridership, I thought that was something we should do. And so that's kind of the genesis of it. Uh, I must tell you, uh, pardon the pun here, but I haven't gotten any traction on that uh, from the CODA board yet, but I still think it's a good idea. Yes, please, please. Um, just, just diving into this a little bit uh, in, in detail, uh, commuting to work. Uh, Sometimes that comes up a lot in parking downtown availability. What's, what's the status of that these days? Thank you, Rick. If I may, I'm going to just, in the interest of time, I'm going to go through what I think are 11 major benefits of having free CODA. The big one being what you just mentioned, Rick, because it's more than just, hey, this is helping out low-income people. I think it's a going to be a major benefit to everybody in the city. Uh, first of all, wouldn't it be nice to have a tagline for our city, largest free public transit in the country? Uh, we're going to have to hurry if we want to do that, uh, because 
uh, close to 40 cities are already free to public transit, Washington, D.C. being the latest. And I have a list here of all the ones uh, from Akron, Ohio, down to Vail, Colorado, who have, who have uh, added free CODA. But I think that would be a nice tagline. Secondly, uh, it does really help out with the parking solution. And the city's spending tens of millions of dollars on parking garages. If we had more people riding the bus, we could at least be thinking about one less garage every once in a while. Uh, and then the parking solution also means uh, the uh, traffic would be reduced so that uh, if you can imagine every bus that has 20 people in it is really uh, conceptually at least 20 less cars on the road. So isn't that a help to everybody? Cleaner air, think of the pollution that we would be saving or re removing or reducing if we could have fewer cars on the road. Uh, you mentioned the employer, employer employee benefit, just being able to get to work. Uh, the $2 doesn't sound like much, but it's $2 each way. And if you're on a minimum, minimum wage, say you're making $10 an hour, that's $4 out of the first $10 you get that's going to, to public transit. Uh, and we would have more disposable income. Uh, the biggest uh, provider of income for the budget, which I'm sure we'll get into here before we're done for CODA, which is uh, the total revenue last uh, last year was 220 million. That's uh, their budget. Uh, the biggest provider is the sales tax. We have a half percent sales tax. Uh, we're talking about doubling that with the new proposal, which I'm sure we'll get into that too, that uh, CODA is proposing. But the fact is, you'll have a little more disposable income, especially those who will be spending their money. Uh, an another really important one, I think, is our bus drivers will be able to concentrate on driving. They won't have to look to see, do you have the right amount of money? And those who don't have the money, so we're stopped. And here we are parked behind a bus that's not moving. But your transfer is old. Or, for whatever reason, you hop on the bus, you hop off the bus. Here we have a driver. She's only focused on looking ahead and driving. So related to that, another reason, the, the bus stops are going to be so much shorter. The biggest complaint we got about riding a bus, or the reason why people don't ride the bus, they say, I can go get there so much faster in my car. That argument really is going to melt away in large part if the bus just stops long enough for you to hop on and hop off. Uh, and I might mention uh, Shannon Harden, who you probably all know, city council president, said we're going to have uh, separate lanes for CODA. Uh, he's, he's been a very strong advocate for uh, free CODA, by the way. Uh, and can't you imagine on the freeway we have a lane for CODA buses? Uh, maybe if you're stuck in traffic and those on the bus wave at you, the, 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 that, that, might, that might encourage you to take it the next time. Uh, <clears throat> we wouldn't have a fare box to repair. Do you know we have a bus that goes around, does nothing but repairs fare boxes? We wouldn't have to have that. Uh, and uh, also, there's costs associated with CODA that would be removed. Uh, they're spending a lot of money so that you can use your smartphone to get on the bus without uh, having cash because nobody carries cash today. Well, unfortunately, there are those who don't have a smartphone uh, besides for me. Uh, a lot of lower income folks don't have smartphones. So, phones. so all this money we're spending on technology, forget it. Don't spend another dime on it. Uh, for those who can remember we had a C bus that was extremely popular, uh, discontinued, and I can tell you why if you want to know what CODA's reason was uh, as we go along. But, and I'm sorry, Rick, I've gotten wound up here, haven't I? <laughs> that's, that's what we're here for. Okay. Well, but, okay. but on that one, why don't, why don't you, just on that last point, why don't you ask out there? Oh. Question, what's my question? 
I don't know. What did I you, got a lot was, of questions. What was his last? Okay, yeah, why did go. CBUS get discontinued? Does anyone want to guess why? COVID. COVID? Yeah, well, COVID did. You're right. So why isn't it back again? Uh, and I will tell you, it's here's CODA's answer. Uh, because the CBUS, for those of you who aren't, don't know what I'm talking about, CBUS was free for those downtown. And it went on High Street, uh, north, uh, roughly 2nd Avenue, then down south uh, to where Grange Insurance is. That was free. And for those of us who work downtown, hopped on it, which I did a number of times to go to the courthouse, for example, it didn't charge anything. And the great thing about it was uh, I have a granddaughter who is living downtown uh, right near the Capitol uh, who likes to have a good time on weekends and we go to the short north. She'd take the bus. We did, I didn't have to worry. Her parents didn't have to worry about her coming home at one or two at night because she was on the bus. I mean, that is a worry you have. Okay, to answer your question, CODA said it's because even though the, the expectations were exceeded, it caused too much crime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> George Arnold's laughing. I, I had to bite my tongue because, first of all, even if it were true, even if it did cause too much crime, why not address the issue? Why allow poor behavior to uh, interfere with good policy? And so if, if you're having crime, if we need help on the mental health side, if we need uh, uh, police officers, I'm, they're talking about putting police into schools, which is, to me, a crazy idea. But uh, why not address it and, and not penalize all those who enjoyed having the, the so-called free CODA? So anyway. My last point here that I think I was running into, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do because we don't have any hesitancy spending money uh, for those in the upper five, 10%. That includes uh, $2 billion being proposed for a new airport. And I'm not here to say we shouldn't do it, although I I'm very comfortable with our present airport, but maybe we'll add a few gates. But a billion dollars, just so we have this in perspective, a billion dollars is a thousand million. A billion dollars is a thousand million. The total fair revenue is 11 million. It's 11, that's all. The budget, for CODA is 220 million. So uh, who wants to tell me, here's your guess. Uh, pretend like you didn't hear those last numbers. Uh, what percentage of the total budget of CODA is covered by the fair? Is it 90%, 60%? Let's, Wait, let, before let, you heard that, okay. come on, some of you were thinking, huh, come on, I can see you nodding. Yeah, uh, 80, not, I mean, yeah, what do you, what do you're, you say? you're selling a service. What do you okay. say? 20, very close. <coughs> Anyone else? 10. 10. Scott, Scott said five. Here you go, Scott. That, that's what it is. That's what it is, 5%, okay? Your turn. <laughs> I, you said you had 11, didn't you? But, uh, yeah, my well, 11th one, I th I've already gotten to them. I just went through them well, well, quickly. That's, well, no, that's fine. You can come back when we need to. Hey, uh, we're talking about all that, and we're talking about workers primarily and all that. What about young people? What about teenagers? What about Columbus City School students? Right, well... I think you know we, the Columbus Schools does invest in CODA uh, for their kids. Uh, Ohio State 
if you enroll in Ohio State, it's covered, uh, code is covered. So it's not like we're doing nothing. We're already started. But Rick, you tell them, because uh, this guy next to me, you don't, there's no Rotarian that in this room or anywhere else who cares more about this organization and has devoted more time to it than Rick Studer has. And Rick, as our outreach person for the Columbus schools, can tell you his experience. I know we haven't rehearsed this, but uh, to, to tell him about what happened at Walnut Ridge. What rehearsed? What does that mean? <laughs> we, go, go. So before COVID, um, the faculty advisor at Walnut Ridge, who was working with some students, and they were putting together a community service team. And she called me and said, I've got a, a group of kids who are onto something that's not the usual stuff. And uh, they're talking about uh, no charge for CODA. And why don't you come out and talk to them? Because I don't know if this is going to fit communities. You know, it's more political, da, 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 da. Sure, I'd love to do that. So I went out and talked with them. And they were fired up. I mean, they said, they didn't know all the statistics. What they did know were the uh, limitations on them, their families, you know, they don't have a car at home, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so they were wondering why, why, why couldn't CODA be free? And that was about as far as they had gotten, but, but that seemed like a leap in itself. Why would they even, you know? So I went out and talked to them and, uh, I said, this is, this is really cool. I think there's a Rotarian and a community leader that you ought to meet. And uh, as a result of that, Bob went out to uh, Walnut Ridge with me and sat with these kids and really had a, an in-depth conversation about that. Remember that? That was just so stimulating. Sure um, anyway, they put together their project. They testified at the uh, Board of Education meeting. I don't know if testified is right, but advocated. And the, the board members, I mean, they, oh yeah, well, that, sure, why shouldn't, yeah, that should be, yeah. Uh, they uh, testified at the CODA board meeting, which was interesting in itself. It's not like they got a standing ovation. But they got some real attention. I mean, high school students, CODA board meeting, what's with this? Uh, that never happened before. But they were, they were great. They had a few minutes that they were allotted. Each one of them took about one minute of their uh, rationale. And one at a time just got up, delivered that, next one delivered that, and uh, like I say, it wasn't a standing vision, but I, I will tell you, the looks on their faces, the board members, were uh, fascinating. Fascinating. The really sad part, I thought, Rick, was the stu so many of the students at Walnut Ridge had internships. Yeah. A signed up form, yeah. uh, and it was really nice of the employers to want to have our students come to see them after school. There was only one problem. They didn't have the money to pay for the bus to go to the internships. They didn't have the money, uh, which was really going to still cost the $4. It cost $2 to get there, and then they'd be interning for a couple hours, and then uh, they'd have to spend. But anyway, uh, when you start thinking about the money we're spending, I want to just go back to that for one second because we don't have any trouble finding money. Uh, well, let's just take fat cat developers like me, okay? Uh, we don't have any trouble. What was it, $30 million for the North uh, Tower market, and now they're going to give them more money? And I'm not opposed to that. They say it wouldn't be built without it. The last one, which was in the paper a couple days ago, and we were talking at our table every day, it seems like another project, but this is a 24-story tower at the peninsula. Again, we need housing, so I'm not complaining about it. But the city is putting tens of millions of dollars into it. 
far more than the total fee here. And I had a little letter in the paper uh, last week. I'm a troublemaker, I guess. But I was saying that uh, there was a big announcement that they're going to put 50 million into Linden for affordable housing. And this is one of my son Jim's hot buttons, mine too, affordable housing, because uh, it's an oxymoron. Housing isn't affordable, and we really have, we have a national uh, crisis, and that's another subject. But the 50 million in Linden for 150 apartments, 150. So 150 people are gonna benefit by spending 333,000 per apartment unit. We don't think, we're, we're, we're celebrating, and I'm celebrating the affordable housing. I'm not celebrating the inefficiency or the fact that we have uh, all these riders, 19 million uh, tickets sold. It's not 19 million riders, but 19 million is where we've been. And we're talking about spending 11, 11 million so that that can be free for them. And the other thing I want to really point out is the word free, I think, is such a marketing strength that you're going to find people who today are driving and they'll think again before they spend $15 and park in the underground garage, for example, which is where we park. And they'll hop on the bus. It's free. The bus is going by. Uh, they'll hop on it. Uh, I've seen it happen. It's happening in these other cities that I mentioned, uh, up to 40 cities. They've seen a spike in uh, growth. So if you want to see more riders, and it's important to have more riders, I think we should have it. And we'll get back to, uh, we'll have you ask some, uh, Bob some questions, because I'm sure you're brewing with them. And uh, this, the whole economic thing is, is in itself. Uh, two th quick things. I read the, uh, uh, Bob sent me an email with the 40 cities, uh, and he mentioned a couple. You know, we're the 14th largest city in the country. Um, Bozeman, Montana has free busing. Vail, Colorado. Hoboken, did I tell you? Yeah, there's, it, it's, it goes on and on. I mean, seriously? And we're the 14th large? Okay, well. Um, I got to do this now. Bob sent an email uh, on the 24th of August to uh, Joanna uh, Pinkerton, the president of CODA, uh, CEO of CODA, Shannon Harden, and Dwight Smith. Uh, most of you know Dwight, big, big, big community person, advocate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Good morning, Joanna. Your great CODA innovations increasing service, making it easier by smartphone camera, providing free ridership for certain groups, all are terrific. I ask you, beg you to consider, at least on a trial basis, for two or three years, making CODA free for all. Here are the facts. Ridership fare portion of the current $220 million budget is 5.5%. Uh, the 11 plus million uh, fair revenue could easily be made up by alternative sources. Ridership has been languishing even before the recession and COVID and contributes, uh, continues to be at approximately the same level for the last 15 years. We have not yet approached the 1988 ridership, as Bob said, while our service area population has doubled. We will not have the increase without providing for free ridership with such a big ask with the potential upcoming levy. Would you please include questions about free ridership? Joanne, I would love to meet with you again if you're willing to discuss the topic. Thank you. This is, this is our Bob Weiler. Uh, go right to the source, huh? Huh? Anyway, um, gotten any response yet? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, and, and I, I don't want to mischaracterize Joanna Pinkerton. Uh, she is a fantastic person. Any of you know her? She's a great leader. Uh, 
very innovative. Uh, she's kind of uh, thrown out there a little trial balloon that we're going to have a $8 billion uh, capital improvements bond levy. Uh, they, they mentioned it last year and then pulled it back, uh, and, but it's back, it, it'll be coming. And a lot of what she's proposing is terrific. Uh, BRT, bus rapid transit is terrific. We need it. We need more than just more buses. We need to have them move faster. We need to be thinking about technology in terms of uh, having the drivers be able to control the traffic lights and do all kinds of things so that, so that people will want to ride the buses. And by the way, uh, here's a question for the audience. I was going to start off with it. How many of you have ridden a CODA bus in the past year? Wow. Three, one of which is my son. Uh, <laughs> that's very interesting. Well, maybe I ought to have a broader question. How many of you uh, have ever ridden a CODA bus? Oh, well, good. Well, that's great. Or at least you wouldn't want to admit that you've never been on. <laughs> That's great. Oh, give him a break. Yeah, I know you have. <clears throat> Let me just talk about one other subject about, you know, why would you make uh, this rider free? And we can talk about sources of revenue because I don't think that's an issue. Get, getting the 11 million is not the issue. But why would, why just in conceptually? <clears throat> You know, I want you to be thinking about what we as a society recognize. Uh, we talked about three, about 315 at our table. You know, you don't pay separately when you ride on the interstate or on highways. We call them freeways. They're certainly not free, but they're not funded as, as you are when you drive. Let's look at our, our great libraries. They're certainly not free. Uh, we've been building them like crazy, which is wonderful. Uh, but yet, when you start thinking about it, probably 90, 95% of the people aren't ever in those libraries, but we still pay for it because we think it's an important part of our fabric as a society to have those libraries. Uh, I can't help but say parks when I'm looking at you, Amy. Uh, our parks, we've got wonderful parks. We've got Good Ale right here. Can you imagine walking on Good Ale Park and then having someone be there to charge you when you walk in the park? Or Franklin Park or Park of Roses or Schiller Park, Metropolitan Parks? No. Uh, we pay for them. We have fine ways of paying for them, but we don't charge every person when they enter the park. In the same way with our public buildings that are certainly expensive, uh, can you imagine charging to walk into the Capitol or Rhodes Tower or Rife Center or Supreme Court building or City Hall or any of these buildings? No. And what I'm saying is public transit should be treated like public education. We don't charge for public education because it's such a benefit. And on this one subject, let me just take a second because I spent a lot of time public schools and we recognize that something close to uh, 82 to 85 percent of our voters had no kids in the Columbus schools and yet we're asking them to support levies. So you have 20 percent, a little less than 20 percent who actually have kids in the schools and you're voting for a levy and you're voting many times older people who are on fixed incomes and you say, boy, that is a hard sell. But they passed, not easily, and some got rejected and had to come back, but they passed because we believe that it's good for our community, it's good for our city, it's good for our country to have an educated population. And I say the same thing here. It's good for our city to be able to have those people be the lower income, be, be the at food shelters that they need to take a bus to, to get to their doctor's office, to get to, to uh, employment office, to get to see their friends. I think it's important that we have 
public transit in the same category as our libraries and our parks and our buildings and our highways. Almost questions. Almost time for questions. Yes. So you dealt with the, the money issue that it's it's surprisingly small figure. So out in the elected official community, politicians, et cetera, et cetera, other civic leaders, mayor, who's opposed to free coda? I mean, uh, publicly the, and, and I mean. Uh, the coda board, coda leader is not on board. That's what it amounts to. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, pardon the pun again, throw anybody under the bus. <laughs> Uh, but the county commissioners, uh, by the way, uh, this is something I think on my tombstone is going to say he tried because this has been going on now for about 15 years. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to say that Jim and, and Dwight Smith, who was mentioned earlier, and several others have been helping and working on it. But uh, until the CODA board uh, says go ahead. We can't, get, the county commissioners, and I've talked to them going back before Marilyn Brown, have all said, we'll put a one-tenth of one percent. That's all it would take, is one-tenth of one percent. They're talking about raising it to a half a percent, which is 50 basis points. This is just be 10, would be enough to cover it. The county commissioners are not going to put it on the ballot. They could actually pass it on their own initiative without putting it on the ballot. But they're not going to do it, and I don't blame them, without having CODA say do it. So that's where we're stuck. That's where we're stuck. Is, uh, and I will tell you, I have talked to business leaders. Now, I'm not guaranteeing what they tell me is the way they feel in their heart. I just assume... Uh, you know, my old theory is that 98% of the people in this world are honest, and you stay away from the other 2% if you can identify them. Uh, but uh, I think uh, most everybody that I've, I haven't talked to anybody who really says I don't like the idea. Okay, okay. Comments, questions, let's go. Uh, I think, John, you were first. I have a lead in for you. And Maybe this helps, maybe it doesn't. Brief, John. I spent most of my life trying to make people more productive. I go to a retail store and the one checkout is 20 open. I go to a restaurant and half the tables are empty. Any place that seems like these days you go and you ask why are, why are you not using these, we can't get enough people. But you've got to dig one level deeper because I go to Walmart a lot and I start asking the working level manager at Walmart and they said, because they can't get to work. They either can't afford to get to work or they're not willing to use up their car and time on traffic, even though the bus goes right by the wall. So there's a productivity issue. If we're worried about our workforce in this area, it might be nice, just like our students who get out of high school ready to go to work, with an employer ready to hire them, and they can't figure out how to get to work. There's probably a lot of people. My suggestion a pilot program, six months trial. Thank you, John. John was saying that we're having such trouble getting people to work. And, and yeah, the, the terrible worker shortage, a restaurant we go to frequently is closed now on certain days during the week because they can't get the, the, the uh, waiters and even the chefs to come in. But uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, and, we, and you say, let's try it on a trial basis. I'm so sure it's gonna work because we did have it on a trial basis. We had the C bus on a trial basis and it was, I don't know if any of you took it, in many cases the bus was absolutely packed uh, because people were taking the bus. Well, it's not packed now, yeah. We gotta, well, I gotta watch our time, we wanna get all these comments in. Uh, yeah, Scott, and then back here. Uh, right now, we have two bus transportation services in our community. One are that all the school buses run by various school boards who are not particularly into the transportation business. The other is CODA. Doesn't it make sense to combine them? Yep. Wouldn't it make sense to combine CODA with all the other bus uh, services? School, all the other school buses? I would sure think so. And Scott, you bring up another real important point, And that is we really have a shortage 
of drivers. That's one that that's probably worse right now than even what we've been talking about. If you can't get drivers, it doesn't matter if it's free or not free. They're not moving. But with a combined effort, you would think that they would have a better opportunity and maybe could pay a little more. If you look at the combined budget of the, what the school districts pay and what CODA's total budget is, I am convinced you could save <coughs> a lot of money if it were all free and they were combined. Thank you. I agree entirely. I throw you the other shirt, but you already have one. That's right. Okay. <laughs> go, go, go. Real loud, so everybody can hear. One, a lot of people need to be thrown under the bus. <laughs> as soon as possible. The other is something you haven't mentioned at all is the safety aspect of buses. I've done some studies and vehicle or transportation accident rates, death rates in Europe are one fourth of what they are here. And half of that is because you can, if you aren't capable of driving a car intelligently, you can get to work on a bus. That's a great, I'm going to add that to the list too. Would, would, you, would you pass that back? L let, me, let me amplify that one second. He was saying, yeah. hey, the, the comment was that it's safer. The other thing which I think I should mention is, uh, CODA has done so many good things. I don't want you to walk out here with the idea that I think CODA is poorly run. It's extremely well run. And they've gone on with internet service, which many of you may know. And here's another big benefit. You can have your laptop and somebody else is doing the driving. You can be doing your work and, it's, and to the point just made, how much safer is that? You're not taking your eyes off the road. You're not looking at your phone that some of us may once in a while do at stoplights. You don't have to worry about that. Someone else is driving the bus. Thank you for that. Here we go. I just wanted to say real quick, also sort of adding on to this, what about if you could get somebody like uh, the crew soccer people to say, we'll support free bus rides to the games. And then you get, um, you know, like the, the art museum has free Sunday. What if you could get kids from the east side and the west side on the bus to be able to go to the free Sunday at the art museum? I mean, how can we pull commerce in to show everyone that this would work. I think that's fantastic. I'd love to have it, even if all these ideas that we're talking about is, is enough that we could do it on a temporary basis and make it, hey, let's see if we can expand it. Just get it started. I would love to see that. And the very last thing, and by the way, thank you so much for having us. There's no advertising today on the buses other than CODA. This was a policy put in uh, many years ago. I'll be real quick. Uh, we're talking about uh, where do we get the 11 million, which really when you start looking at it against these billions of dollars, uh, 8 billion worth of code of stuff, we could get that money so quickly. Can you imagine asking Intel who's getting 20 billion, do you mind putting 11 million a year and having your logo on the outside? Uh, I have not talked to them, or to my knowledge, nobody has, but I would say that would not be a hard marketing uh, chore, or the Huntington or Nationwide or anyone else to be on all the buses and without destroying the logos. So there's so many other possible ways of raising the money. It is not a money issue. It really isn't. It's, uh, are you willing to go, go along and not be a follower? Because if this if we don't do this pretty soon, in the next couple of years, we're going to do it. We'll be the last in instead of the first in, the first major city, or the largest major city. D.C. has just gone for it. Two more quick things. One, if any of you are finding after this discussion that you are opposed to free coda, please stand. Okay. <laughs> now, we no, time's up. Let's thank our fellow member and one of the greatest people, one of the greatest resources in this city ever. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much.
Well, I, we have some time here to spare and uh, socialize and fellowship. And I hope everyone has a great week, a great Labor Day, and we'll see you on Monday, September 11th.